views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Oh uh, boy, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show Talk Radio to Thrive By. Hey, I'm Dr. Pat. And if you're wondering, how the heck am I listening to this show? You know, honestly, I don't know which network you're listening from, but I want to say to you, I'm hoping it's transparent and I thank you for tuning us in. Today, why your child will, Benny, this is for you too. Benny, who knew we were going to have so many shows for you this week? I know, week? right? It's a great week for me. Oh boy. Another Benny show. Why your child will need a smart card to thrive in the future with my very special guest and special super host on the network, Debbie Pokornik. And why is this necessary? So here's the deal. We got the generation of children, you you too, Benny, being raised, right? We got them right now. Uh, they're going to require different skills. They're going to require different abilities. But, you know, they're being raised by parents that also had required different skills and abilities. But are we really thinking ahead? You know, do we have something that we know our kids are going to need? Or are we kind of guessing or are we not even like, I don't really care. I'm just trying to raise a kid. Well, guess what? There's a major shift happening, and Debbie's going to talk about this today. And there's something important to know. And I know that you folks out there, parents, grandparents, all of the above, this is what I know about you. You care. You care about your own kids. You care about your grandchildren. You care. You said it to us, we know it, we believe you, and that's why we do shows like this. Now, Debbie has, is, is somebody that is amazing. She has a great, great show, which she's going to tell you about. But more than that is she's someone that understands and can tap in to what it is we need in this world to thrive, no matter what age you are. No matter what age you are. And, you know, she and I have a little bit of history. Sometimes in our lives, we've been unable to find a job. Really? Yeah. And what does that that then turn out to mean? What does it mean when you get fired after 25 years from a job? Are you going to just roll over? Or are you going to look at what you need to do, tap in the energy to do it, and then show up as she has shown up? So here's what I love to say about this. Today's show is for you to open up your minds, open up your hearts, and man, let's get the questions out here because who doesn't want to be vibrant and powerful? Debbie, great to have you. Oh, Dr. Pat, I am so thrilled to be here. And uh, I, I love what you just said, because I think it is important we recognize, yes, I'm talking about it from a child's perspective, but the truth is we all need a variety of different skills and we always need to be polishing them. So thank you for that. Well, I think, you know, this is really important because, I mean, some of us, I mean, if I look at my life, uh, I had a friend of mine teasing me not too long ago. She came into my house And I had this um, cup and saucer with a little rabbit on it, like, you know, a bunnykins kind of thing, right? Right. And she looked at me and she said something, seriously, Pat? You know, is that like, really? That's in your, yeah, China cap? I said, "Uh, yeah. I said, I don't understand. What's the problem? She says, you know, generally I see that with kids. I said, let me just tell you. I don't really have the childhood that maybe you had. And I think we get to be children at every age we are. Right. But mm-hmm. the question really is, how do we be vibrant and powerful and how do we help our kids be this? Right. Isn't that really what you're going to help us with today? Well, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So absolutely. I will. Let's talk about it. Why be vibrant? Why be powerful? 
And why do that now? You know, what it really comes down to for me is that there's some really big stuff happening. Okay. (laughs) You know this, I know this, but I don't think we all really recognize what it is. I know for myself, I learn more about it every day. It's like there's an awakening occurring. And we know we talked about a shift happening back in 2012 that's kind of started for some of us before then, but it's only gathering in momentum. And it is getting really, really hard, I think, for us to ignore it. So we're kind of given a choice. We can stand tall and take it on and really pull on our own vibrancy, our own personal power and tap in, tune into who we are, what gives us strength, what brings us pleasure, like your little bunny cup, you know, and bring those into our life so that we're able to truly do what we've come here to do. And part of what we've come here to do is to participate in this awakening. Yeah. And, you know, I love about this, the the part that we get to really stand up and be everything that we can be. But, you know, I think each of us does have our challenges. And certainly, you know, we look at the challenges we have, but you're on a real mission here. And, you know, that is really love to talk about because those of us that are on a mission, I mean, you know, my mission has been to help people create a better life all over the world, create a better world and to do it through this format. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a mission as well. Tell us what that is. I do. My mission truly is to help spread peace on the planet by awakening women. And Mm. I do that by helping them tap into the truth about who they are so that they really can bring out the best in themselves. And then by doing that, bring out the best in everybody else, including their kids, but also their neighbors, their colleagues, their communities. Because as women, we really are at the the pinnacle, the the Mm -hmm. center point of this awakening. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the radio show, because, you know, this is one way you're doing this on a regular basis. You know, it's really fun to be talking with you today about this, because somebody said to me, you know, once upon a time, you know, how are you going to create a powerful voice for yourself and do it for others? And you have to remember this, if you don't know it, I stuttered most of my teenage years. So for me to even be speaking here today, um, I know that I I think I had an angel touch me on the shoulder, but for you, you are also inspiring and helping people really rise up and you're doing it through your own radio show. Tell us about that. Well, my vibrant, powerful mom's radio show, that's exactly what it's focused on. Really. It's, I mean, I believe that we're all meant to be vibrant, powerful beings, right? So that means that we need to be tuned into our inner wisdom. We need to know how to collaborate with other people. Um, We want to be creating a life that we truly love and inspires us and motivates us and makes us want to get out of bed every morning because heaven knows it's hard enough to do that some days, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so to me, it's about awakening people to this in a way that helps them to feel strong and empowered. I do not believe we help anybody by telling them what they're lacking or what they're doing wrong. I truly believe every one of us is on our journey. We're at a certain point in our journey. And that's the place that we have to work from. And there's nothing good or bad or right or wrong about where you are. The important part is that you're starting to notice and and to increase your self-awareness and to pay attention. And so really, that's what my Vibrant Powerful Mom Show is all about, is providing topics that people can listen to and perhaps walk away with a little bit of a a validation about what they're doing, a new idea that they can try. Perhaps when I do interviews, it'll be a guest that they feel they want to pick up that person's book and it will help them on their journey. It's about really making it easy for people to tap into this piece of themselves so that they can become that vibrant, powerful person that they want or that they want to be. And when we do that, We raise our own vibrational energy, and by doing that, we help to raise the vibrational energy on the planet, which I know a lot of people don't understand, so let me just tell you this much. It makes a difference. It truly makes a difference. When 
any one of us raises our vibrational energy, it helps to lift all of us out of the density in this world. So that's what my show is all about. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about this. And, you know, I want to ask you this question that many people may be asking themselves. I think moms are awakening at a rate that is unprecedented. And people might be thinking, what do you mean by that? What do you mean awake? Of course they're awake. But I really think they are. I mean, from a technological point of view, moms over 35 hold a record on the amount of smartphones they have and how much time they spend on the internet or even podcasting. Moms do that. They own that. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet we still want to believe that moms are not capable of awakening. And I would love for you to talk to that for a minute because that is really a myth we got to bust. Oh, absolutely. Moms are capable of absolutely anything. And I think that, I mean, we have adopted this whole patriarchal system. And I want people to know I'm not pointing fingers here at males or anything like that. This is us as a whole, Mm -hmm. right? But we have adopted this masculine model for work, this whole idea of production and independence and all that kind of stuff, as if that's the most important thing. So we have taken all the divine feminine and a whole bunch of female qualities and we've shoved them to the side and we've said, these things aren't okay. They're weak. They're not desirable. They're problematic. And so don't use them. So we have virtually taken away all of the tools that make us vibrant, powerful women. And guess what? we have still managed to do what we've needed to do. Not as easily, and certainly it's been very draining on us, which is why we see more health issues and everything else, but we've still been able to do it. So imagine when we start to tune back in to our incredible personal strengths and really awaken that piece of us that's been asleep now for far too long and bring in that divine feminine. I mean, there's no stopping us. We can do incredible things. Yeah, we're actually seeing it. We're seeing it in this country, especially by the women that are speaking up and saying we're not going to be sexually assaulted anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's take a a short break. When we come back, Debbie's going to talk about what the heck, smart card. How do I get (laughs) one of those? How do I apply for it? Let's take a short break, everyone. Yeah, we want to talk about a smart card and what you can do for your kids. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our wheelhouse to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Integrate spirituality into your everyday lives on Universe Soul Heart Radio. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Kathleen Johnson explores the concept of sensible spirituality, keeping you grounded, connected, and centered on the path to wholeness. Kathleen has dedicated her life to facilitating holistic healing and wholeness in others. Listen to Universe Soul Heart Radio and learn how to flourish, grow, and impact all we do on planet Earth. For more information, go to universesoulheart.net. 
you ever feel as if you're working twice as hard but only getting half as far? Are you trying to connect with your path in life and finding it elusive? Mainstream Metaphysics Radio is a weekly call-in show where we harness our connection with the universe and use what is in our power to affect change for optimal success and happiness. This hit show bridges the divide between what is and what we do not know. Eve, named one of the country's top psychics, also known as the MBA Psychic, invites you on this journey for this live call-in show with readings, featured guests, leaders, and visionaries in both business and spiritual callings. So join Eve Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as she takes metaphysics mainstream. For more information about Eve, visit EliteTarot.com. That's EliteTarot.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. For more information about me, I'm Dr. Pat. You can go to the drpatshow.com or you can go to transformationtalkradio.com. You know, before we kind of jump ahead here a little bit, can you please tell folks a little bit of the work you do with others and how they can find out more about you? Um, And also, I want to talk about a couple of the um, events that you've got going on. So let's take a few minutes to do that. Okay, I would love to. Um, The best way really to find out things about me and what my programs are and everything else is to go to my website, which is Empowering Energy. So the word empowering followed by the three letters NRG stands for Natural Realistic Guidance. And uh, that's a dot com. So empoweringenergy.com. And then on there, I have several freebies because I love to make freebies, apparently. <laughs> and so I have a handout on, you know, five secrets for being a vibrant woman and a booklet for decreasing stress in your life. And I have a relationship building game, sibling rivalry booklet and all of that. You just have to dig for some of it. It's not all on the home page. Here you go. Here's all my freebies. So I'll give you a little hint there. If you decide to sign up for a discovery call with me, you're going to find all these goodies. <laughs> so those things are there and they're available. And I think they can give you a really good idea of about the kind of person I am if you haven't been listening to my podcast, which, of course, that's where I'd love you to go first is to the Vibrant Powerful Mom Show, which airs on Transformation Talk Radio on Mondays at 2.30 Pacific. And uh, and you can, you can catch uh, a lot of great ideas, but also get a really good idea of what you think of me and how I work and what I talk about. So the program that I'm really pushing right now is the Sisterhood of Vibrant Powerful Moms because we're actively looking for moms who are interested in increasing their awareness, their level of compassion, their ability to collaborate with others. And you're going to see from today's talk how this becomes so important, why it's important we know how to do this. And so we're looking for moms who want to do this by focusing their energy on raising kids who are self-aware, who are connected, and who are ready to transform the world. So if you're at all interested, if this resonates with you even a little bit, then go to empoweringenergy.com. You can do forward slash parent group, all one word, all lowercase, or you can find my poster there on it and just click on the sisterhood and uh, and go ahead and, and take a look and see what it's all about. And that is an ongoing program. So even if you're listening to this a year from now, it is probably still going on and still available. We don't go, there's maybe like 15 people in each group. So we keep the groups very, very small um, because that's how you create a sisterhood. And then you kind of graduate on to the to the bigger group. So that's what I'm most excited about at this point in time. Awesome. And, you know, this is really ongoing. You know, there are lots of things that you continue to do, not just to help the listeners that listen to your show, but also, you know, to help moms, to help women all over the world for the issues that may be emerging, you know, in the day to day or the way that they're living in. And so thank you for all of that. Um, You know, this next, um, This next topic we're going to talk about, though, is one way, right, is one way to really express what's going on. Um, You know, we've got this topic today, the title of the show, Smart Card, Smart Card. Um, And yet 
we're looking at that and thinking to ourselves, what does that actually mean? But you've created something amazing about what a smart card is and how you help implement, integrate, and have this become a way of life. So the first question I think is, let's tell folks what the smart card really is. Okay. Well, (laughs) you know, I really wanted to use a term that made people (laughs) recognize. We're talking about the fact that kids of the future need something a little different than we did. And so to me, the term smart card really showed that off because we right away start thinking, oh, what does that mean? Do I got to get them something new for their phone? (laughs) (laughs) Or did she mean to say smart car? (laughs) (laughs) And so that's why I chose it, that and the fact that it truly is an acronym. And, uh, And so it stands for a lot of the skills that our kids are going to need. And so you mentioned at the beginning that, you know, kids are going to need different skills than you and I needed. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So just a few of those reasons, if I may, um, are, uh, first of all, there's this awakening going on, right? So that means that for so many of us, we're learning to take back our personal power. We're learning how to integrate the divine feminine back into our own way of being. We're starting to speak up for what we believe in. We're questioning what we believe in. This is a new thing for us. A lot of us have just in the past accepted our beliefs as if they're reality and there's nothing we can do about them. And now we're starting to question and go, wait a minute, why do I believe that? What, you know, what does this mean? What proof do I have? And then of course, we're releasing these old ways of doing things. So that's already changing things for us. But now let's just take a moment and reflect on society, right? You have your consumer, For example, people are starting to realize that there is some really important ramifications that occur when we do things in a certain way. And the consumer is starting to say, you know what, I'm not going to buy those shoes if that company is going to treat their employees this way. And we're aware for the first time, we know, we hear these stories about what's going on. On the flip side of that, we're also looking at another company and saying, I am going to buy their shoes, even though they might be a tiny bit more expensive, but I'm going to do that because this company gives so much of everything they sell to a child, you know, over here. And so we're starting to look at things differently. As a consumer, we're starting to say, I want to put my dollar where it actually makes a difference. And so even the things that we're buying, we're looking at them to actually make a difference elsewhere in the world. So I think that that piece mm-hmm. is huge in, yeah. in what we're doing. Yeah, and, I, and we are learning from our kids on this. Let, let's just comment on this. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things we think is, you know, parents have all the knowledge and wisdom. But I'll tell you, <laughs> I'm around a 10-year-old quite a bit. And I will tell you this. I'm learning a ton. I'm learning things that you don't even imagine 10 year olds are thinking about in today's world. And they know, wait a minute, I don't want to buy that doll. I don't want to buy, mom, don't buy this meat anymore. And you're thinking to yourself, there is this alignment that happens about this. And, you, you know, it's really fascinating for somebody to even ask their child, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we don't do that enough, do we? Well, I mean, that's, that's the great big we. I certainly have spent most of my life saying to my kids, so what do you think? <laughs> Tell me your thoughts. Share this with me. But I love what you just said because this is a neat part about this smart card and everything that we're going to talk about. A lot of the qualities that the kids are going to need, they've kind of come with them already installed, but not turned on. Mm. Okay. So it's like they've come with this software so that they're able, I mean, we've all had a child that will pick up a remote control. I mean, when you were young, I don't know about you, but for me, there was, well, we didn't have remote controls first off, but when we did, (laughs) when we got remote controls, there was like three buttons, right? On, off, channel up, volume up (laughs) and down. And that was it. 
And all of a sudden you get this remote control that's got what feels like a hundred buttons on it. And these kids can pick them up and they can use them and they can show us how to use them. And that's amazing. They're not, nobody's taught them how to do it. They just have this sort of natural ability to understand it. And when you really stop and think about that, this is true for so many things. So what you just said about um, learning from our kids, that to me is a huge piece. The learning is not one way. You did get a child that could help teach you and help you to evolve in the same way that you can help support them and and help them to evolve in their own ways. But their ways that they need to evolve are going to be different from the ways that you need to evolve. And so there, right there is part of the challenge with this. How do we teach our kids? How do we help them if we haven't even necessarily been through some of the things that they're going to need to know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for many of us that were sitting here, it could be a little baffling, but your notion and your idea and what you help women with by understanding what the smart card is about, I think what this does, Debbie, is I think what this does is give relief. Do you know what I mean? Give I hope relief. So. <laughs> well, well, what it does is it, it identifies something and it says, listen, this is what you can use. This is how you can change. This is what you can be become. Um, and, you know, you've used this in your own practice and what you do with people and people change. I mean, let's talk about what happens with this, you know, when we say what's a smart card, right? Um, and then, you know, the main thing to think about, and we'll talk about this when we come back, is how do we install this smart card? How does that work? <laughs> and what happens when both mom and child do something like this together. We're going to take a short break. More with Debbie McCormick when we come back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is your choice on Natural Peace Radio. Follow Sarah Van Ryswick as she addresses the power of emotions. Each month, Sarah covers different topics as she helps listeners activate their energetic spark and create powerful energy and amazing opportunities. Manifest your desires with Natural Peace Radio. For more information on Sarah and her work, visit naturalpeaceliving.com. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible?
Hey, everybody, welcome back. Yeah, I love what we're talking about here today. Um, and why do I love it? Because what I what I think is so important is for all of us to learn some new things, new tools. Uh, Debbie, give us your website again. Empowering Energy, three letters, NRG.com. Okay, today we're talking about why your child needs a smart card. Okay, and we touched upon a little bit what a smart card is. You're going to define this a little bit more. And then most importantly, how do we install your child's smart card? <laughs> well, <laughs> it yeah, sounds it all sim, very is that mysterious. A card? Is that a SIM <laughs> <Yeah>. card? <laughs> you step on their toe, it opens their mouth. You, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, okay, so first let me tell you that smart card is an acronym. All right. And the SMART part of the acronym really is focused on skills that are, are going to be new to a lot of us, that we haven't really given a lot of thought to, depending on where you're at in your own evolution. So that's the SMART part. The CARD is kind of like the foundational pieces. So CARD actually stands. The C is communication skills. The A is assertiveness. R is resiliency, and D is discipline. So you might notice that these are not new ideas. These are things that we've been hearing about, that workplaces, corporations, organizations have spent billions of dollars bringing speakers in and trainers in to help improve the communication skills, the assertiveness, the resiliency, you know, and the discipline in the workplace. And we've also heard it that we need these things at home. Our schools are trying to instill it in kids. So these things aren't new to us, and yet we don't have them down yet. So this is really critical because I want people to understand this. You start wherever you're at. So if you struggle right now with being assertive, let's say your boundaries are almost non-existent and you have a lot of trouble telling people when you don't like when they're doing something you know, to you or, or saying something to you that doesn't feel good, you're unable to say anything to them. So let's say that's an area you struggle with. Well, then you're going to want to focus on growing in that area for yourself. However, where your child's concerned, remember I said they come kind of with this stuff um, already installed. We just need to turn it on. So with your child, in many cases, you could say to them when they say something to you, once you understand what assertiveness is, it's standing up for yourself in a way that doesn't put the other person down. So let's say your child comes up to you and says, give me back my toy. <laughs> you know, You could stop what you're doing. And rather than maybe yelling at them or sending them to their room or anything for being so rude, you could say to them, you know, I love that you know what you want. And I love that you're willing to stand up for what you want. Now, let's see if we can figure out a way for you to tell me what you want without you striking out at me like that. Because that kind of hurt my feelings the way you said that. Could you try saying it a different way? And so there might be teaching depending on the age of your child and what they need. The goal is to get them to be able to say, please, can I have my toy? And to say it to you in a nice, strong voice and, and get their toy back. So once you understand this, you can take a step back and say, okay, so where do I need to work? Start with the card part and focus on those. And then once you are starting to get familiar with those, you'll start to notice them more and more in your child. And you can help your child to explore their own ability within that. Does that make sense? Dr. Pat, are you with me? Yeah, we're learning things really in the world is, is from a perspective of learning, sharing experiences, and also vicarious learning. I mean, isn't that really what we're, we, you know, we, we kind of have this idea, Debbie, and maybe you can talk to this first, is we think, well, wait a minute, I'm a parent, I'm an adult learner, I'm going to learn these tools. Yeah, but we don't think enough about that we could share these things that we learn with the people around us and especially our children. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what it was like for you growing up. But I'll tell you, the way that I learned how to make a meatball was by grandma showing me, and me then doing it with her. And then out of that experience, I learned how to make one of the best meatballs in the world. Right? Yes. Um, some people think. Uh, some people have said to me, "How did you actually have an attention span that long enough?" <laughs> but I'm making it with my grandma, Debbie. 
Yes. I'm making it with my grandma. So, you know, what you're talking about is a shared learning experience when I hear you. Yes, I'm talking about sharing the learning. I'm talking about role modeling because once you know your assertiveness skills, you still want to be able to role model it. I'm talking about looking for teachable moments. Yeah. And perhaps most importantly, taking some of the pressure off of yourself. You don't have to know everything for your child to get this. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I I don't want people to walk away from this show thinking, oh, I can't do it. There's no <laughs> way I could ever do this. You know, because that's just not true. It's just that if you start looking at your child and deciding, okay, they need work on communication skills without ever working on your own, chances are that's not where your energy is going to do the best work, mm. okay? Your child's going to show you what they need. They're, you, them and your own intuition are going to guide you, and those teachable moments are going to come up, and you're going to be able to use them. Wow. So in a way, I've kind of jumped ahead to how you're instilling this card, but it's so important that people understand that. It's so relatable, that. though. They're so yeah. related, though. Yes. Right? I think it's almost hard not to talk about one with with the other, and that's why I kind of brought it up, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, Grandma did say, uh, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need the garlic. You're going to need this. You're going to need that. You're going to need that, right? Mm-hmm. And if that, if we didn't have that moment of setting the stage for things, we wouldn't have had an opportunity to actually integrate the learning. Um, you know, it's funny that I'm thinking about this because that experience for me, I never forgot it. And I never really forgot how to make those meatballs. So there's something beyond just looking at a smart card as a smart card and also about creating moments where children and parents alike can reflect on these. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're taking this journey together. Yes, that is exactly it. You're on a journey together. You have two different paths. So don't force them to walk on your path. Um, but understand that this is something we can do together. We can work together. And my child might be the one who models for me how to be assertive. Or, you know, kids are so connected to their resiliency until it gets covered up in muck. And so <laughs> a lot of adults are, you know, in that place where they don't feel resilient at all. They don't feel like they can handle whatever life throws their way and they don't know how to help their child do that. And so they're they're kind of in a panic state. And when you start to realize that, you know what, just because you're in that spot doesn't mean your child's in that spot. We're not, we're born naturally resilient. So if you can can figure out how to help your child keep that polished. And just a hint, there is a podcast on Vibrant Powerful Moms about this. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can, you know, start to, to reconnect to your own resiliency and at the same time be helping your child. Yeah. So. You know, one of the things too I wanted to talk with you about is let's talk about this idea of belief you know, and what we believe in and what we believe in for our children. You know, some parents absolutely believe in the highest and best and all possibilities. Sometimes we don't see that and don't believe that. You know, I was very fortunate as a kid uh, to have a lot of different parent mentors growing up. But the one thing they all had in common, especially my uncles, was to instill in me that I can do anything and be anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think they kind of saw this really high spirited kid that couldn't get a sentence out very well, uh, but had some chutzpah. And uh, these are the things I learned. And then they demonstrated it. Um, How do our beliefs help sculpt our children? Our beliefs create our reality. And so everything that we do uh, it is, tends to be based upon our beliefs. So in fact, it, just in my a very recent podcast that I did on Vibrant Powerful Moms, mm-hmm. I talked about some parenting beliefs that hold us back uh, and make it so much harder for us to really enjoy the role of parenting. So those beliefs are well worth looking at. Um, becoming aware of, okay, what what is it that I believe about this and why do I believe that? And what kind of proof is there out there? Not to, this is a tough one because I don't yeah. want people to, once you say a belief, you'll find things out there that do support it. But I mean, mm-hmm. really get becoming curious and really getting 
into it and saying, all right, so what kind of proof is there that, you know, could poke holes in this? What if I had to debate against that belief? What would I say against it? Because as soon as you do, you kind of shift your perspective and you start looking at it a little bit differently and you start to recognize that, huh, that belief isn't actually my reality. It's just dictating my reality oh. because I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, beliefs are huge, huge, huge in all of this and uh, come up often in my discussions with parents for sure. Mm. What do you think is the most challenging aspect that you discover when you are talking to parents? What, what, what do you think has, ha, has shown up for them and that you spend quite a bit of time on working with them? You know, it's so varied, but usually where we need to start is with the, with the parent themselves spending so much time in worry. Okay, worry is such a huge deal for so many parents. And so they're anxious about things. They worry about things. They don't, they're not able to fully trust their child, even though they want to trust their child. So this comes out in things like you can't hang out with that person because I don't trust them. But kids are very quick to say, well, that means you don't trust me. You don't think I can make good decisions, you know? Mm. So it, there's, there's so much around that in itself. And so my, my biggest goal with parents really is to help them understand that they're enough already as a parent. They don't have to worry about um, doing it wrong because there is no right or wrong. They can make it a lot harder for themselves. <laughs> they can make it a lot more fun for themselves. My goal is to help them figure out, okay, how do I enjoy this relationship called parenting? Because it doesn't have to be all stressful and hard and scary and, you know, like so much pressure to do it right. But our system that we have right now, this whole patriarchal system has sort of said that, wow, if you want your kids to succeed, you better start reading to them when they're in vitro. You know, you better make sure you read with them every night. You better get them spelling their name by the time they're three. These are not the important things that your kids need to have. That's mm. not it. You know, your relationship with them, that uh, connection with their own resiliency, these kinds of things are way more important. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that folks know, uh, too, how they can work with you, because we're talking about quite a few things today. Um, and I want to just get a question on here. and We may skip the break, Benny. Um, question came in uh, from one of our listen listeners in our instant feedback. And the question came in and asking from, it uh, looks like MJ, Mary Jo, Mary Jo, asking the question, um, I have been... I have been struggling lately with fear um, and you just read the news, you just read the headlines and most of us as moms are so fearful for our children and what we put them at risk for. I'm trying to see these little abbreviations here as I'm reading it. Um, uh, thank you for taking this topic on. How, how can I be smart and still be fearless. Okay. Good <laughs> Great one. question. Yes. We are going to skip the break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and I am going to make a suggestion with this. Mm -hmm. I will... Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer the question. I'm mm -hmm. also very aware that we're leaving the people that are waiting for me to tell them what SMART stands for, yep. that we're leaving them hanging. Okay. So I'm going to be a guest back on your show. Yes. Right in a couple of months, and I'm thinking that this might be the perfect topic because it's a big one. I yeah, agree. and it, I, I agree, and I'm glad you said that because I just wanted to make sure we acknowledged her. Um, yes, you know, I, I mean, this is a big topic, but what you're talking about builds resilience, and that's part of how to deal with fear. Fear. Absolutely. Fear is a very human thing. So we are going to, as long as we're in that state, that ego state, okay, which some people think ego is bad. It's not. It's the right. human side of you, okay? But ego knows it can die. And that is where fear begins. 
right? That there is an end. And so as a result, fear is a very natural part of being human. Resiliency, that knowledge that you can handle whatever life throws your way, that you can bounce back from what feel like really, really bad things, that resiliency is also a natural part of who you are. But it's more of the higher self kind of piece. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is if you don't start to awaken to the fact that you have both an ego and a higher self, it can feel like fear is everything. Yeah. Because that balancing piece isn't really there. Yeah. So it is so worth it to to really explore that and to start to notice where your own disconnect with resiliency might be. Because I tell you, I, I often say to people, if you picture a rock in the earth and then people have just been throwing mud on it for however many years you've been around, that's your resiliency down there in that pit. And you have to uncover it. And it takes a heck of a lot of work. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, but it's so doable and it's so worth it. And mm-hmm. the closer you get toward it, to it, the easier it will be to pull it out. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think this is really part of really exploring and sharing, you know, okay, what can I do? How do I implement this? What can I learn today? Yes, exactly. And in just to further that thought, though, Mm -hmm. um, you asked about programs. I do work one on one with some people. I don't do a ton of one on one because it it takes a lot of my own personal time. But Mm -hmm. I have a 90 day program that um, we are we sit down together and by together, I mean virtually often. We can get together physically if you happen to live in Manitoba <laughs> and actually <laughs> around Winnipeg. <laughs> but we, we get together virtually and we create a plan for those 90 days. We talk about what are the biggest pain points for you? What are the things that you really need help with? And we, we develop a plan, tailor it to you. And really it is about installing your own adult smart card. It's just a little bit different from the smart card that we do for the kids. So um, it, it is a great way to go if you have the resources to do something like that and you really want to do the work. So it requires a discovery session because I like to make sure that it is the best fit for you and for me. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, but it can it can make huge differences because basically I'm holding your hand through the computer as you go through mm-hmm. the different stages and, and uh, uncover these things. Oh, yeah. So. And so important to do that. And so important to learn these and I think that's really why we're doing the show today too is to Mm -hmm. really look at you know things that maybe you think about but also things that you may not be aware of you've also taken it to the part of yeah we can install this we can do this we can it's very doable you know, and uh, yeah, and if the one-on-one program doesn't work, I have retreats <laughs> <laughs> for a two and a half day, and we can only install part of it in those that two and a half day. But you'll walk away mm-hmm. feeling like a different person. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh-oh. So can I share what SMART stands for? Because I have to say, I'm the kind of person that would be sitting there going, okay, my pen is ready. Yeah, tell, me. tell me. Tell me. <laughs> okay. So the S of SMART is social consciousness. And I'm not going to explain any of these. I'm just going to tell you them and then you can ask me whichever ones you want to. M is mindfulness. A is authentic awareness. R is rove ability. Yes, I made that word up. So it's (laughs) R-O-V-E dash ability. (laughs) If you write it without the dash, the computer doesn't like it. So, (laughs) And then finally, the, the T is techno savvy. Not even a huge surprise, I don't think, because uh, we know our kids need to know a lot about technology. Just think about how our phones have changed in the last 10 years, right? It's incredible. Yes. And so definitely our kids need to be that way. So that's the smart part of the card. Do you want me to share any more on any of them? I want to know how I implement it. I want well, to know. Yeah. I'm ready to to go on this. And you know, I know in the in the time that we have, I like to really say, what are your top three tips to people? Because those things are the things that we hold on to, right? You know, it's 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 one thing to really be here and hear this. I love the idea of exploring the possibilities because we have a lot of folks that don't even know they could do this, Debbie. And what you're doing is you're not just inspiring them. 
but you're also helping them do things that are very different. What would be your tips? You've worked with so many people. Well, it would start with awareness. Everything starts with awareness, right? So what of those smart card uh, qualities, which ones do you need right now? And like I say, you start wherever you're at. So if you need to start on the card thing. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to get them right down perfect before you right. move on to the next thing. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, like really tune into your intuition. It will guide you. And if you suddenly have a, a email or a book come across <laughs> your desk that is talking about mindfulness, that's a hint, <laughs> right? That, <laughs> that's, that's a great place to start. So really, we always start with awareness. And then depending on the age of your kids, because you, you don't want to take 15 years to learn all these things and ignore your kids in the meantime, because that's not even possible anyway, but it just wouldn't work well. So then take a look at your, your kids and think about now if you've uh, learned a little bit about what these things are, then which ones are my kids doing quite well? And what are some of the ones that I can help them with? How do I help them to tune into their own natural ability to do this? And so if you have never, if these things are all like, I have no idea, no idea how I do these. And even if you have a pretty good idea, I will be doing an, a webinar on this topic and oh. I will be talking specifically about smart card. <laughs> Here's all the qualities. Here's how you help to put them in place. So that's sort of what you do. And then from there, you start to use these things in your everyday life because that's the greatest challenge for us. Anytime yeah. we do something new, it feels awkward. We don't like it when it feels awkward. And then our inner critic pipes up and our limiting beliefs pipe up and we start going, I can't do this. I can't. I don't know how to do this. I, I just can't. And and it's not, it's just because you're going through what's called the learning cycle. And the learning cycle always starts with being awkward. And then here's the unfortunate part about the learning cycle. <laughs> Stage two, you feel fraudulent. So now you understand the skill a little bit, but you feel like a fraud when you use it. And you'll notice that you kind of might do a little smile or an eye roll to another adult who's in the room when you use it because you're feeling a little bit fraudulent. This is a normal part of the learning cycle. Once you know that, those things don't have to have any effect on you because thankfully the very next stage is where you start to feel comfortable with it. And now you kind of make it your own and now you own it, right? It's yours. And the final step, you don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just automatic for you and you use it all the time. So don't let awkwardness stop you from trying these things because until you practice them, you cannot get through the awkwardness stage. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, it totally makes sense because you're talking to awkward here to me. <laughs> I mean, you're 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 like talking to somebody who's like bowling China closet. I mean, literally, other than being Pat Pat the brat. Um, you know, honestly, this was my childhood. I'm sorry to say, Debbie. I wish I would have had you around to coach my folks, but didn't happen. Um, but I I can be awkward. You know, people see me outside of doing the show, and First of all, one, they cannot believe that I'm so quiet. I am such an introvert. I almost blew up the Myers-Briggs thing. Number oh one. Gosh. Number two, I am a little bit awkward. I mean, I will bump into things. I mean, I was walking in a red carpet once and I lost my shoe. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but... Oh, it's okay. I, I only laugh because I relate it's, totally. You're okay. describing me. <laughs> but it's okay. See, what you're doing is you're leaving a gateway for people, for moms to be, wait a minute, we're not perfect, but we are perfection. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm always telling people you are perfect for the role of being you, but that doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. Life isn't meant to be done perfectly. You wouldn't be here if it was. Mm. <laughs> That's wow. just reality. I want to thank you so very much for today. Um, and I think I have time for one last question. Again, give out your website. But more importantly, um, you know, what's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? All right. Well, the website first is Empowering Energy, N-R-G, three letters, dot com. And 
I really encourage you to go there and check things out and at least sign up for some freebies if you like. And do check out the Vibrant Powerful Mom Show because I do a lot of great stuff there. And I don't mean to sound like I'm tooting my own horn. No, I'll I have just for you. <laughs> okay. It is a I great show. It. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. And I love all the interviews that I'm doing. And so really what I'd like, the message I'd like to leave people with is that I've already said this, but I have to say it again. Start where you're at. Stop feeling as if you're missing something, you're broken, that there's something wrong with you. There's not. You are absolutely perfect for the role of being you. So start wherever you're at and then just really awaken that curiosity for what more is there in life? What would bring me more joy? What could I do with my child so that I can just really zero in on loving them in a way that works for both of us. Because so often we feel this, like I have to love them, they're my child. Well, no, this is about creating and building a relationship together with them, learning and growing together, installing your smart cards together. Mm -hmm. So when you really believe in that, it can just make a huge difference in how much fun you're having. And that in itself is going to attract back a lot of beautiful things to you. I love it. Debbie Pekornick, everybody. I'm Dr. Pet. If you've missed any part of this, it will play later on on Transformation Talk Radio. Have a great one, everyone. Stay tuned. Another hour on TTR is coming up. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.